Hey, this is Lorena and I wanted to do a video for you today on how I do a logo on a business shirt. Um, I thought this would be a good embroidery starter up video. Um, I think this was one of the hardest um, placements for me to figure out on where to put a logo on a jersey, how to place them, and I'm going to share some of the tools that I use to do this and also some of my tricks, measuring tricks that I do. So I really do hope you like this tutorial and I'll see ya. Uh, in a minute, yeah. Okay, so these are the supplies you're going to need. You're going to need cutaway stabilizer, a pair of scissors, your embroidery nippers, these are my favorite. I like them because you can get the thread in really tight spaces. And you're also going to need a marking utensil. I, I tend to use chalk, but whatever your preference is, a water soluble will work too. Um, and I love these little um, placement rulers. I got these at All Stitch. They're embroidery buddy rulers. The ones with blue markings are for large shirts and the red is for youth shirts. Here I'm showing you that a client gave me a shirt that I already did and I ask them usually to bring me the shirt so I know exactly the size of the logo that I need to place on their jersey. This also helps with placement. What I do is I cut myself a whole bunch of stabilizer. This roll is perforated already and because it was perforated I got it for $35 this big giant roll. I'm also showing you here that I use two layers of stabilizer and the reason is is after you launder it the stabilizer kind of changes its density and stiffness and you want to make sure that the logo is nice and stiff and doesn't pucker after they wash it. So I'm showing you the hoop that I use. This is a 100 by 100 millimeter hoop or 3.9 by 3.9 square inches. And I'm also going to use the embroidery buddy for the large garments for adult sizes. I also like using my grid marks because they really do help when you're using your markings. I check the inside of the shirt to find out what size is it and on the embroidery buddy there's different sizes. This shirt was large so I'm making sure that it lines up to the large on the shoulder area and also in the center. You can do this with shirts that don't have collars and you just fold it in half and you find your mark. I'm also going to show you how I do it on this kind of a shirt that has a collar. I'm going to line up the shoulder to the 2x mark and then where I see the buttons that's the center for me on this collar and then I mark right where the center of the logo is going to be placed. I also do a couple different tricks here and I'll show you why. I use three fingers to line to the edge of where I want the logo to line up to the edge of my design and I also use three inches from the very bottom button and then I get the garment and I put it on myself and look in a mirror to see if it looks kind of like where it should be. Sometimes when you use the embroidery buddy it seems like the logo ends up going into the armpit and I want to make sure that it doesn't do that so I look and make sure that I have everything lined up the way I want it and that it looks right. Sometimes when you get the garment on a body you get a better idea of how the placement looks and how it should be. Once you do that, I go ahead and get my stabilizer and I'm going to talk about how you hoop everything. Make sure that you have your stabilizer all the way around when you hoop it and not halfway over. Here you see that I shifted the hoop over. When you have a logo that's closed up or has several layers, if you don't have that stabilizer all the way around the hoop, the design starts to shift on you and it makes a huge mess. Here I'm showing you if you have a closed design, make sure that you have the stabilizer wrapping around all areas of that hoop. Here I'm showing you a heart. If you do a heart and you fill it in on the design, if you have it like this, it's fine if it's one layer. But if it's several layers where you do a satin stitch on the edge of it and it's off, what happens is that top layer or the last layer shifts on you and then that's why some designs you can embroider them and then the design literally shifts over for some reason on the second layer and it's because you didn't hoop it right so it's really important especially on the kind of logos that you're going to do here you see that I have my ruler lined up and I make sure I make a 90 degree angle and I make sure that 
mark is nice and sharp when I start hooping. Hooping is one of the most important areas of embroidery because if you hoop something crooked, the design is crooked and it's just bad. <laughs> it's bad. So making sure that you have everything lined up and you have your markings nice and bright so when you hoop it on that grid mark, you make sure that you hoop it well. This is a great preventative of keeping you from making mistakes and having your garment hooped crooked and this is how I prevent that. I'm showing you my grid marks that I drew on there and that I also use the template that comes with my hoop to make sure that everything is lined up nice and straight where I want it to be. And I know for sure that I hooped it straight and it's lined up in two areas, vertically and horizontal. I'm also showing you in this section of the video, it's how big the design is. This grid mark shows you what it is on the fabric plus what it looks like on the screen. I tend to count how many squares I have and then I go to my machine and here you see those same grid marks on the machine and then I count how many squares I have wide to make sure that it's the same amount of squares on my garment that it would be on that screen. That's how I make sure that the size is the same. I'm also counting up a couple times and then I resize it by either shrinking the design here or enlarging it. Here I'm changing the hoop and making sure that there's a square around the hoop so that my design is inside the hoop size. And here I'm just showing you how I counted the rulers and how I'm using the squares to show me what to do. I also lay down the grid mark again to make sure that the design is placed where I want it to place. Remember that little dot is where the center of the logo is going to be, but also when I did a vertical line and horizontal, it's where I want the edge of the design to sit on the shirt. And so I just move everything over and do placement. There's a couple of things that I check here. I make sure that the hoop is on the frame. I also check underneath and the back of the shirt to make sure that no fabric is underneath that hoop area. Some of my biggest mistakes is not checking underneath the fabric and making sure that it's sitting right. Once I've done that, I change the thread and I start embroidering. So once you see the machine embroidering, remember that embroidery is assembly based, meaning once you have the machine working on one shirt, you go back to the next shirt and start doing the grid marks like you saw me earlier and hooping everything. I have three hoops, so I tend to hoop two of them while one machine is going. And then once you have a shirt done, it's time to remove all the excess threads that don't supposed to be there. And this also becomes an assembly. So I gather a whole bunch of shirts and start cutting all the threads. And then I open up the shirt, turn it inside out, and I start cutting off this cutaway stabilizer. Note here, Make sure that when you are cutting that stabilizer that you can see that shirt. One time I did this and I had the shirt underneath the stabilizer and I ended up cutting the garment and ruining the shirt and had to replace it. So once you have everything cut, you turn your shirt right side out and remove any markings. And so I wanted to share with you some of the things to consider about embroidery. It is assembly based, meaning you end up doing a lot of repetition a lot of times. So when I did this job, I had 10 shirts and I ended up hooping the same way, hooping them on the machine and then cutting them the same way. I personally like assembly based jobs where I get like 20 or 10 shirts. I price better because those jobs have a faster and better rhythm of accomplishing. I don't like very much when someone brings me one shirt, one hat and one bag. And the reason is I tend to have to, you know, you the setup is different for each product that you're embroidering and so it makes it a little bit more tedious for me and it takes a lot more time to get those three jobs accompl accomplished in comparison to getting 20 shirts done honestly I know it sounds kind of weird like you're saying 20 shirts but what I'm saying is you're not changing the hoops, you're not changing different stabilizers, you're not changing placement designs. Those kind of things take longer to set up sometimes than just to embroider the item. So I do like it when a client comes and brings me 
20 items or 10 items of the same product or even five items of the same product because it gives me the opportunity to set up once. I know what stabilizer to do. I also know where placements placement belongs and it seems to flow easier and better as you're doing the job and they tend to get done quicker. So price wise I tend to price a little bit kinder when I do these kind of jobs. When someone has four different type of items like a bag or a hat hoop or a logo on a shirt it just kind of makes each job I have to set up differently for each different job which makes it a little bit more time consuming so I tend to price higher because it also uses different stabilizer different hooping frames and stuff like that that comes with embroidery so just understand if you're not the kind of person that likes doing something more than once and doing it in a repetitive manner, this may not be something you like. I really do like it personally. I can do it all day. Uh, when I'm in baseball season or football season, I end up embroidering from 8 in the morning till 10 at night. It is, it can be tedious, but I feel like if you put some good music on and you're singing along and, and you're in your house working, I, it doesn't bother me. But my husband hates these kind of jobs. He doesn't like having to do a certain job in a repetitive manner all day long. So it really is how you like to work. Some people just like doing one job and moving to the next. Understand that embroidery, especially if you have a big job of 100 business shirts, you're gonna be doing those 100 business shirts for a good two, two days maybe or a full day to get it accomplished. So I really do hope you like this video. I hope you learned something and I really do appreciate you and I thank you for watching and uh, yeah, I'll see you next time. All right, bye, bye.